at the worst times going through this, when it just hits you so hard and you're trying to wrap your head around life without someone you love, respect, and honor so much. There were times I literally put this jacket on at my house by myself, and I would just walk in circles and make myself praise God. Is there's a scripture that says, put on the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. He said, Terry, we're gonna get through this. The Savelles are not quitters. You're not the first person to go through. You won't be the last. We're gonna get through this. Later in life, I was like, that's exactly the way the Heavenly Father is when we sin. Hey, and welcome to Winning Conversations. We are so glad you are here. Obviously, we're not in our studio in Crowley, but we're with some very special guests. We're on location. We're on location <laughs> with Terry Seville Foy and Cassidy Foy. Hi! This is a lot more pink than you're used to. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. <laughs> definitely. But it's beautiful. You've Thank done a great yes. job. So we are in this legacy series, and we're talking about Dr. Seville mm -hmm. and the life that he lived and what a great, incredible example mm -hmm. he's been. So we couldn't miss the opportunity to, to get you guys mm -hmm. with us. Mm -hmm. So first of all, thank you so much thank you for so inviting much. us. We are so blessed it's to be honor. here. Yeah, thank you for having us yeah. and to get to talk about him. Yeah. yeah. That's great. I That's wish great. we were more like talking about live your dreams. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, yeah. Just a warning, we may cry a little. It's okay. It's we, okay. We may we're used to tears. Okay. Yeah. 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 The other exciting thing that's happened today is it's our 100th episode Yay. of Winning Conversations podcast. <laughs> Bring out the cake. So, right yeah. yeah. <laughs> we were looking at the schedule and we're like, we do hit 100 when we go to the Yay. studio. So that's we're excited. Extra special. It's very yeah. extra special. Mm -hmm. But we have so loved hearing all these great stories about your dad, about yeah. your pop. Um, he was such an incredible man of, of God, and we were so honored to just kind of honor him through this legacy series yeah. and talking about it. Um, but we'll just open it up. Tell me, what was it like to have him as a dad? Oh, my goodness. You know, the first thing I would say is that my dad, he made serving God attractive. He made serving God fun. Like I was never, even as a kid, I was never embarrassed that my dad was a preacher, yeah. going through high school, college, never was ashamed of it or embarrassed. That's Even great. when people would call him a prosperity preacher or whatever they yeah. called him, mm -hmm. was never embarrassed because he made it fun and very attractive. Um, funny note, I never really called him dad much, and especially from college on, I called him Le Père. Le Père. <laughs> Le Père. Yeah. Wow. Isn't that a funny little thing? I called him daddy a lot, but uh, I speak French. And right. so I always was like, Le Père, Le Père. And all the voicemails I have on my phone still is my dad calling me saying, Bonjour, it's Le Père. Yeah. <laughs> That's so sweet. That's so I sweet. Know, I save those. Absolutely. But growing up, I want to say this, that um, one of the things I appreciate so much about dad and mom is that they truly involved me and my sister in their faith projects. So I grew up watching them use their faith for everything. It wasn't like we watched our parents from a distance and we just kind of rode the wave and, you know, mm -hmm. watched right. them be blessed. We were right there involved. I remember so much as being like five years old and I was sick. I was in my bed and I had a fever. Daddy, will you come pray for me? And I remember he came in there and laid hands on me and prayed. And he literally said, I remember him saying, sis, there's going to come a time when you can't always depend on daddy's faith to get you through this. You have to learn to believe on your own at five years old. Yeah. And so he got us involved That's in great. that. And so watching my parents um, go from poverty to being mm -hmm. blessed, it marks you for life. Yeah, like sure. you learn how to do it yourself. And um, I will say this, this will make me cry, but as soon as we got home from California, mm -hmm. after daddy passed, I walked in my house, it was empty, and I just fell to my knees by the piano, because I live in my dream house now, and I just said, daddy, you're the one who taught me how to believe for this, and I'm so glad he did. I'm so glad he taught us the principles of faith, how to use your faith and believe for impossible dreams. Mm -hmm. You can go to the next question. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, that's amazing. Yeah. I would just say, like, to your point of involving us in faith projects, yeah. 
I remember as, I don't know why I'm crying. I'm crying because you're crying. <laughs> um, but I just remember he he would take me on trips with him as a kid. This isn't even a sad story. I'm just crying. <laughs> but it's like a cute story. But he would take me on some of the mission trips with him as a kid. One of them, I was 11, and he was taking me to Tanzania with him. And I just remember I really wanted a camera. And so... Um, let me just like get it together. I really wanted a camera. And um, so he was taking me on this faith trip. He was about to show me this whole side of Africa. He wanted to involve me in it, you know, and he told me, well, you got to believe for this camera. And so he, I would like go to work for him. Um, he taught me how to like do a prayer of petition, believing for this thing. You wrote out exactly what exactly what I wanted. Printed out a photo. He taught me how to have scriptures attached to it, and it's just like a seemingly like small thing. A camera. I'm 11 years old, but I've taken it with me throughout my whole life. Mm -hmm. Like now, you know, it's a lot bigger things that I'm believing for. But he taught me that at 11, and it's stuck with me all these That's years right. so right. yeah. it's just little things like he really did teach us yeah and helped us put a demand on our faith not just relying on what he taught you right. know right. I yeah. think one of the most important things though is the not just the beginning or the end but the middle that's where the work comes in and yeah. I think whenever we hear the faith message yeah. a lot of the time it's oh I'm believing for this to happen yeah. It's going to happen, but what are you doing to mm -hmm. make it happen? It's yeah. that in between that, like the prayer of petition, like that's right. the biggest one that yeah. we've heard, like that's the influence that he had is yeah. what is the work that you're putting in it to yeah. believe for these things? Mm -hmm. Vision board. That's yeah. another, you know, yeah. those are right. the things, it's the work, uh -huh. it's the middle that you're doing. Yeah. And when we see, you know, preachers or we have that influence, like of believing something's going to happen, well, we need the... We need the middle part. We right. need the work. And right. that's what right. he taught is the, what are you putting into it? Yeah. Like, what? how are you believing for it? What's mm -hmm. your faith walk like? He was so yeah. practical. Like, yeah, yeah up, exactly. I, was, I always took my friends to hear him. You know, sometimes I wouldn't take them to hear other preachers. I'm like, you're not going to understand. Trust me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but I would always take them to hear dad because I'm like, he's so practical. You're yeah. going to get it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. But he was such a fun dad. So much fun mm -hmm. and funny. Um, everything from jet skiing. He would slalom ski. Um, everything. Um, the the names he would give us. Every single kid had a nickname. Did y'all hear about that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I personally had so many nicknames for my dad. <laughs> he called me Susie Q. He would wake me up, bouncing my mattress, going, wake up, my little Susie. He called me Tara, Tara Labera, Red. In fact, Everyone would notice this, but when I would be with dad, his voice would get a little softer and a little higher when he talked to me. Yeah. <laughs> when he would call me Tara Libera, and what I picture, in fact, I started crying the other day because I said, I don't want to forget this. I don't want to forget these things. Anytime I would walk in dad's office, he'd be at his desk and he'd look up and he'd go, oh, Libera. That's what he called oh, so me, Tara Libera. Yeah. But he would be real high pitched. Lavera, you know, <laughs> but he was just fun. He had wrestling names for all of you. Yeah, because you know he loves boxing, wrestling, all that kind of stuff. So me and all of my cousins, we would get in the floor and we would all like wrestle against each other. And every kid had a wrestling name. So like, I think Mark James was Junior Samples. I forget. <laughs> that <was a> long <laughs> yeah, time that he came up with. Yes, yes. Yeah. Pop gave him to us. So mine was Carrot Top. And so Classic. he would like do this whole welcome carrot top, and I'd run in and dream. Stuff. Oh, <laughs> yeah, Madison was Babe the Big Hair because she babe always had big, big hair. hair. Babe that was Madison. Hair. Yeah, so we all just had like fun little names. I forget Dylan's. What was his? Was it Little Bruiser? Little Bruiser. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Bruiser. <laughs> bruiser. Yeah. 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 He How was fun. just fun. Yeah. He seems like fun. all the stories we've heard are these fun yes. things. Yeah. Aside that maybe us from the outside didn't always see that. He yeah. told great stories in his preaching. Mm -hmm. But these are this is like so precious that he had all that. these great names. Yeah. So. Something very unselfish about my dad. His birthday was Christmas Eve. Mm -hmm. So we always had his birthday party at my house. And it started out as his party. Then it turns into Christmas, right? right. Mm -hmm. And every year I would buy him a store-bought buttercream icing cake and he hated that <laughs> but I always got it so <laughs> it was on purpose so I'd be like daddy are you sure you don't want to you want to leave it here with me and so that way I got the yeah, yeah. <laughs> but tell him about when he turned 75 
the car? Yes. Uh, yeah, yeah. So for his 75th birthday, he always wanted this certain Corvette, which I was not good at remembering classic cars that he liked. <laughs> I just called them, you know, red, blue, black. I don't know what they are, but he really wanted this special Corvette. So we reached out to all of his friends and just asked if they would pitch in and help make this dream come true for dad. So they did, but dad didn't know. So on his 75th birthday, this is a big deal, right? Yeah. It's just the family. We're up in his little diner. We've got the birthday cake and everything. And we gave him two presents. One of them was like a sweater. Yeah. So he opens up this sweater and he's like, oh, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> and then he opens up from me. I got him like car stuff cleaning. for car, like car cleaning. Yeah. Like, yeah. This is Real great. Yeah. Yes. yeah. And he opens up and like, oh, thanks. Yes, I love it. And then we're like, okay, right. well, let's have cake. And y'all, he was so grateful. Yeah. He didn't complain. He wasn't the like, meme this of the is little it. kid this opening the avocado. Like, Have you seen that? Yeah, yeah, it's not the avocado. avocado. Exactly. That was him. He was totally. like, wheel cleaners. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> he was so sweet. It yeah. like literally broke our hearts. Yeah. Like, he thinks that's all we got him for a second. Oh, my yes. gosh. So then finally that's we say, so Daddy, there's one more little thing. So we take him downstairs. We go outside. <laughs> And we had a little toy car sitting in the driveway, <laughs> like that big. And he said, do you put water on it and it blows up? <laughs> like, wow. He was still grateful. And yeah. then all of a sudden his dream Corvette right. came around the corner. Yeah. Do you have but, video of this? Yes, we do. Okay. Yeah, we, we can say I'm so glad. Yeah. And the whole day, it was Christmas Eve, you know, after his his moment. Then yeah. we switched to Christmas. Everybody's opening right. presents. But Dad, he kept disappearing. We're like, yo, where is Dad? And he was out there oh, in that well, yeah. yeah. We saw him spit yeah. shine in the car and stuff. Yeah. But he was so grateful yeah. for that's everything. That's such an awesome example that you've had your I whole know. life. Like, that's such an yeah. awesome example. It really is. He has such a heart of gratitude, and that's one of our core values here at the ministry. But I learned that from him, right. that we literally never take anything for granted. Like, we know everything. The lights in this studio, this studio, everything yeah. is because for of sure. God. Yeah, And so it, it keeps you with that heart of appreciation, right. thankfulness, yeah. gratitude. And I got that from dad. He always talked about, I must be God's favorite, you yeah. know, because he was so grateful for yeah. everything. So thinking about uh, how quickly the transition was and the time that's passed now, what has been the thing that's helped you the most moving to the next? Getting next through thing? that. Yeah. I would probably say just knowing that that's how he would have wanted to go like he wouldn't have I know like pop was just he loved working like we were saying earlier he worked hard and he was doing what he loved to do like he was out preaching yeah sharing the love of Jesus even though it's hard for us you know yeah so quick yeah told the family I know years from now we're gonna look back and say that's exactly how he would have wanted to go Yeah. yeah I mean, that's all I knew my whole life was he was gone 25 days out of a month, traveling, gone, yeah. hotels, planes. So to think that he preached and then in a hotel, last moment. you know, it, but how I've coped personally is um, sometimes I watch YouTube. I watch yeah. him. Sometimes I can't, you know, it just gets so emotional. You're like, I don't think I can watch him today. But I brought something because I'm known for props, right? <laughs> I brought something that probably will make me ball. But um there's a meaning behind it, yeah. but this is a suit that dad wore um, two days before he passed. He preached in this suit, and I was given this suit, and I cherish it so much, um, but the reason I brought it was to just say that at the worst times going through this, when it just hits you so hard and you're trying to wrap your head around life without someone you love, respect, and honor so much... There were times I literally put this jacket on at my house by myself and I would just walk in circles and make myself praise God. Because there's a scripture that says, put on the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Mm -hmm. And I know a lot of people listening, you may not have lost someone special Mm -hmm. or maybe you did. But the garment of praise, I have a physical one. You do. But it's it's a spiritual thing. At your worst moments, when you feel like you can't go on no matter what it is, but you make yourself start praising God, 
we see throughout the Bible, walls come down, yeah. chains fall off, doors of opportunity open up. Mm -hmm. But God is such a healer of the brokenhearted that yes. heaviness starts to lift off of you and joy comes yeah. in his presence, right? Yeah. So for me, this jacket yeah. has become my garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. That's so that. good. I think yeah. it's important to talk about that because everybody is going to have somebody at some point that passes yeah. on ahead of them. Yeah. Yeah. And it's important, especially as believers, to know how do you walk through that. But right. that is the key, is holding on to that word, yeah. that he will take the broken heart. And, and as you mm -hmm. praise God, yeah. as you honor him, then he replaces that. He takes right. He takes and heals those places. Yes. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. That doesn't mean that he takes away the the hole that, that your father left, but yeah. Yeah. That, that it's filled again. Mm -hmm. It's filled with That's God. Right. Yeah. It's like the day we had the final landing when his plane landed. Mm -hmm. That was probably just as hard as actually going out, to see for him. For sure, yeah. yeah. And um, Mr. Copeland said, we don't get over this. We get through it. Yeah. You know? Mm -hmm. And for anybody that's facing something hard, you get through it, yeah. through the word of God, right. yeah. through that, that garment of praise, mm -hmm. you know? That's great. Yeah. That's such a sweet, sweet, precious gift I that you've been this. given. Yes. Yeah. So I'm like, I want to frame it somewhere, but then I want to keep wanna it. You want to wear it. You know? yeah. yeah, definitely. Yeah. Very good. But how lucky you are to have, you know, like you said, YouTube and taught other people, like yeah. all these resources yeah. to hear his voice, to go and hear the yeah. the things that he's taught other people. Yes. But I, I loved um, getting the testimonies from people all over the world yeah. talking about how I he's know. touched them, like reading those was just so inspiring. Yeah. Like this is, this is somebody who's like, these small corners of the world yeah. that we don't even think of it's that he amazing. was able to like impact them. Impact them. Like, yeah. That's amazing. It really is. It's very humbling. And a lot of the messages I was getting when he first passed, it was people who'd never even met him. We're and crying. they're they've yeah. been so impacted and they'd never met him, but mm -hmm. just like through YouTube, through mm -hmm. all of these messages he's preached. It's just yeah. amazing. Yeah. yeah. I, I want to say this real quick, just give you a little representation of how my dad gave me such a portrait of our Heavenly Father. He wasn't perfect, but I'm just saying, um, quick story was when I got pregnant before marriage, my senior year of college at Texas Tech. And I was so, I had been a cheerleader all through school and tried to be like a good kid, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. And I just felt so ashamed because my dad's Jerry Savelle and I'm going to humiliate his ministry. And I just want to share this real quick for anybody yeah. listening that this could help. But when my dad called and he had just found out from my mom that I'm pregnant and I knew the picture of 1991, we don't have cell phones, but my phone in my apartment rang. And when I picked up that phone and my dad was on the other side of the world in Wells, the UK, and I said, hello. And he said, Terry, this is your daddy. And I just broke and I'm going, daddy, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. And I'll never forget how my dad responded. He said, Terry, we're going to get through this. The Savelles are not quitters. You're not the first person to go through. You won't be the last. We're going to get through this. And the reason I say that is before I told my parents I was pregnant, I'm laying in my floor, floor writing in my journal, I want to die. I want to run away. I want to hide from everybody. But I finally decided you can't hide. Like I got to tell my parents. Right. And the way my dad embraced me was with so much love forgiveness, wrap me in his arms. Let's get through this. Later in life, I was like, that's exactly the way the heavenly father is. When we sin, we do things we're so ashamed of. We want to run and hide from him. And, you know, the very thing we want to do is the opposite of what God wants. He wants us to just come to him so he can help us get through it. Mm -hmm. yeah. And dad was one of the most forgiving, loving persons I've ever known in my life. I mean, no matter what it was, I forgive you. We're going to get through this. Yeah. Such a representation yeah. of our Heavenly Father. No matter what it is, He forgives you. Let me help you get through it. Yeah. Isn't that amazing? That is so good. Yeah. I, I've heard that, te like, you are going to make me cry. <laughs> I, I listened to that testimony, and I think you should just, you are a great representation of who Dr. Safel was also oh, like yeah. you have touched people in that same way also. And I, 
was in the same, I mean, we are the same, like we were in the same situation. And I listened to that testimony. I remember it was on a CD in my mom's closet. Wow. I'm going to cry. Yeah. And I listened to that testimony and it, it touched me because oh, I, geez. I was that same, that same way. Yeah. I was that same person. And I have parents who, you know, I think pastor Justin is just as humble and yeah. as Dr. Savelle, like Dr. Savelle touched him and is an example on him. And I had, I'm so thankful that I had parents also, but yeah. your testimonies and the things that you do here yeah. are just as impactful as what he, what Dr. Savelle did. So you are a living proof of that. The, you know, I just want you to know that. Thank you. I just, you know, when you hear that there's two ways we overcome the devil, the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. Yeah. It just makes me want to tell more people because it's just like stabbing the devil. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) And this is, it's the people that you surround yourself with. It's the, the examples that we have, like if it weren't for this person or this person, like we are, yeah, we are a product of the our influence, yeah, right? Yeah. yeah. And if it wasn't for his influence, then who knows where you could have been or who, yeah. and yeah. it's like a domino effect of people that we're yeah, touching sure. and yes. we're spreading Jesus through this domino effect. You know, yes. it's, it's, it's huge. That's, this is what we're supposed to be doing. Exactly this is what we're right. meant for. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So as far as carrying on or the transition and the legacy mm-hmm. is, to me, it's it's what you're saying. We're going to exactly. preach what he taught us, what he instilled. Yeah. To me, the heritage of faith, the heritage he gave me isn't those buildings in Crowley. It's not his Corvette or a motorcycle. The heritage to me is everything he taught yeah. us mm-hmm. yeah. and imparted in us. And our goal is to carry it on, pass the torch, keep it going. Mm-hmm. And the second way to me is through partnership. Yeah. Yeah. My dad was so honorable of people who taught him the word Mm -hmm. and loyal till the end. Mm -hmm. Even when his heroes and his mentors passed away, he still partnered with their ministry. Mm -hmm. I will forever partner with Jerry Sabell Ministries. In fact, when I resigned as the CEO for dad's ministry, I said, dad, I pray that I'm a greater blessing as your partner than I ever was as your CEO. So daddy would always say, dance with the one that brung you, right? So whoever taught you the truth, forever partner with them. So for us and as a ministry, we will forever partner with Jerry Savelle Ministries. It's an excellent example. I think Dr. Spill is one of the best givers I've ever Uh, known. Yeah, And he gave not only publicly, but so many times in private settings. He just, story after story after story of people like, well, he did this and he did this. And nobody would ever have known the wiser. That's right. And I I see that example followed through your family, through everybody. that It's in our blood. It is. is, (laughs) Which is fantastic. And it's in our blood now. Yeah. I love it. It's contagious, isn't it? Yeah. 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 It is. Well, Dad would say that's the greatest spiritual law he ever learned with seed town and harvest Mm -hmm. and we watched him i watched him as a kid give his way i'd when i Mm -hmm. when he had nothing to give he'd find something right you know and as the ceo for dad when i would bring big financial decisions maybe there was a little deficit in an area and his first response was looks like we need to get some seed in the ground Mm -hmm. yeah so you get that ingrained in you yeah that's why i don't think it's coincidental at all 30, 45 minutes before dad went to heaven, that was the last thing he did. Yeah. yeah. So seed. Yeah. I told mom the other day, he set you up for a big harvest, didn't yeah. he? <laughs> yeah. He really did. Yeah. But he did it in every, like even the small areas. Like we would go to the mall and I'd be like, where's pop? And all of a sudden I'd see him over there blessing a lady. Uh-huh. <laughs> or like we'd be, you know, at Cheesecake Factory and I'd go to the bathroom and I'd come back and there's these ladies gathered around him and he's blessing them. Like he's paying for their meal. He yeah. literally like gave, I lived feel like every day. Uh-huh. Yeah. He was giving to someone, you know, he yeah. just lived to give. Yeah. Yeah. I believe it. I see it in, in, a, in what he built in Crowley, yeah. the heritage of faith that continues to be the legacy that we, yeah we continue to have even right. through Pastor Justin and. And Annette, we see yeah. that giving atmosphere, like, what can we do? How can we partner with that? What can yes. we do? And we don't always have the newest, greatest uh, outreach ministries, but we're going to come alongside somebody who does. That's right. Somebody yeah. who's touching yeah. um, touching the lives of, like, the, the unwed moms, mm-hmm. like the Embrace Grace. We just did mm-hmm. a huge baby shower for oh, three moms oh because they made the decision to love their babies Yay, and to I continue. So, yeah. so we see that example continually coming forward i love it daddy would say with faith in your heart and seed in your hand there's Mm -hmm. nothing the enemy can do to stop your dream from manifesting yeah
That's awesome. Yeah. So here on Winning Conversations, we ask every guest, making winners, beginning asking how you interpret making winners in life. Everybody's answers have been different. We This is like our favorite thing very favorite. to ask because yeah. everyone just interprets it differently. So we want to ask y'all, what does making winners in life mean to you? You want to go first? Yeah. Sure. Okay. I feel like to be a winner in life um, would be like to discover God's calling on your life and then to live it. So I feel like so many people just go through, they don't think about what God wants them to do. They just kind of go through the motion. So yeah. discovering what God's calling is on your life and then living it out. Yeah. I mean, that's what we're here to do, right? That's right. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's yeah. what your pop did, too. Yeah, that's yeah. exactly, yeah. that was his life. Yeah. 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 So ours goes hand in hand because my yeah. favorite scripture is John 17, 4 from the Message Bible. But it says, I glorified you on earth by completing down to the last detail what you assigned me to do. So for me, it's making your dreams bigger than your memories, fulfilling your assignment. And in the words of my favorite preacher, I would say, make a decision in your life that quitting is not an option. Yeah. In other words, daddy would always say, when you feel like giving up the most, that's always an indication your breakthrough is about to happen. Don't quit. Mm -hmm. So good. So I would say that's that's a winner in life. That's a winner. Yeah. <laughs> yes. yeah. That's a That's winner. Great. And I do wish that we had our pom poms and we were all happy. And <laughs> oh, oh, so, there's so many funny things about I know, him, but that we could have talked. We about do you have emotional. something? If you have another story, we are more than happy to hear it. Did you know I've, he would always act like Inspector Clouseau? Did oh, y'all know that? No. no. He <laughs> loved the pink panther. No. He loved the pink panther. Yes. And, so some yeah. of my last texts from him, not the last, but some of them. I was in Paris in March, and I sent him a message because the sirens over there, the police sound mm -hmm. like the Pink Panther. Yeah. You know? yeah. right. So I was like, Daddy, you must come with me. I'm in France. You know, I need Inspector Clouseau. And yeah. then he writes back, Paris is calling. I must solve it the case. I guess the Pink Panther talks. <laughs> yeah. I, don't <laughs> I don't know if it's him or if it really is the Pink Panther. <laughs> he goes he has a lot of one-liners. Yes. Yeah. All yeah. the time. Yeah. And I can't even tell you how many selfies I have of my dad on my phone. Those are my selfies. favorite texts. Okay. I've ever. seen you yes. like post about yes. his selfies. That oh. is the time. Amazing. The worst angles and you've ever seen, but no, they're the cutest things. There was yeah. no like reference. Like there was no text before after. You would just get a selfie. <laughs> and then you're like, no well, that's text. the cutest thing like, I've ever seen. You're the cutest pop ever. And he's like, thanks. And <laughs> that, was that, it. It. that was the whole text. Yes. I'm like, thank you. That made my day. I know. Yeah. I yeah. smile so much when you shared that he would screenshot all of your yes. stories yes. on Instagram. I, I thought know. that is the no most idea. precious thing. Not well, until he passed and we know. looked at it. I did know once because one time he was showing me some photos and he kept scrolling and I saw like an old Instagram post of mine from like a year ago oh, on there and I was like, goodness. what was that? And he was like, oh, nothing. And kept going. I was like, that was me. <laughs> Even the videos were blurry. He'd screenshot the video. That is yeah. so funny. But it just, you know, he it, loved y'all. Like, yeah, he, 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 he loved just, he family. Loved you. He loved family. Yeah. Family that's, was his. You know, that's why. We, you know, I don't even want to say that, but but we always picture him in a jogging suit. Everybody else pictures yeah. him in a suit. Mm -hmm. right. yeah. We always saw him in a jogging suit and mm -hmm. a little yeah. robe and slippers eating ice cream. I will say daddy was not the healthiest eater. No. <laughs> Go in his pants. Cheetos, Fritos, bean dip. The good, he stuff. Loved the good stuff. Pecan praline, bluebell pecan praline and ice butter. cream. And I used to like <laughs> sneak over as a kid and go steal it from him, but he ate a lot of ice cream. A lot of ice cream. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> These are so the sweet. good things. These are the things we haven't heard yet. We okay, yeah. good. This, this, is, good. Like, sure. this yeah. was so no, emotional. This is the good stuff. Okay, we yeah. had some fun. The fun yeah. stuff. Yeah. And on a high note, yeah. yeah, we need we need to get ice cream after this. That is what she's great. saying. Yes. Cheetos and beef dip. And beef dip. Yeah. 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 Sounds like a horrible combination, <laughs> but we'll make it work uh, for him. You know what we need to have? Because when I told my dad I was starting a women's conference called Icing, do you know how he responded? He wasn't like. Terry, I'm going to believe God with you. That's going to grow. No. You know what he said? I think I'll start a men's meeting and call it pudding. I was like, what? Pudding? <laughs> Make it <laughs> so work. So we need banana yeah. pudding. That's what we need to honor. Yeah. I'm banana good with that. pudding. I'm good yes. with that. Well, thank you guys yeah, so, you so much, much. Really for honor. inviting us into your to your space and letting us do this here. Yeah. I, yes. love, I love the office. I love the studio. It yeah, is beautiful. Yeah.
Hello everyone. Thank you so much for watching this week's special 100th episode. And thank you, Terry, so much for offering your studio to us. We loved being able to hang out with you and your team and just sit down and talk about the legacy of Dr. Savelle. And don't forget, we still have more left. So please be sure to tune in next week for more winning conversations.